<laughs> people in the 60s looked old because they were named Matilda or Barbara or Eustace. Like, you can't be Eustace and be like 16, okay? I'm saying it. I want to watch this people used to look older video. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. At the age of 18, Carl Sagan looked like a teenager. But it doesn't take long in an old high school yearbook to find teenagers who look surprisingly old. These people are all in their 20s, but so are these people. This is Elizabeth Taylor when she was just 17. No and here fucking are some words. high school students from the 70s. Did people used to look older? Oh my, God. bro, that's not a high school student. That's your mechanic. That's not a high school student. That is a 35-year-old divorced dad who is a mechanic and he lied to you about the carburetor or whatever because you don't know any better and now he's like charging you another thousand dollars even though he came in for an oil change. Brandon McCarthy asked on Twitter and evidence poured in. People shared photos of their parents in their early 20s, their dad at 21, their mom at 18 or 19, <laughs> no. their dad at 45. One user shared their husband at 27 and what his father looked like at 23. And there's pretty much an entire subculture around how old footballers looked decades ago. 24, 31. Oh, what? Hey, Michael Vsauce here. What is ago. going on? 24. My man said 24, bro. I've never seen this. This is the most busted ass mullet I've ever done seen. That is awesome. I, I wish Slime was here so I could ask him what he thinks about this because honestly, like, like this is the most respectable. I'm bald and I know it and I want everyone to know it type haircut. Why did he do this? Like, I straight up cannot comprehend. Like, he, I don't think he's fooling anybody at this point. Like, nobody thinks this guy has hair, right? Like, that's a mustache, bro. He just left a mustache. He got double mustache. He got a mustache on his lips and then another one up top. Four, 31, 33, 29. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Four, 31, 33. That is, okay. I Dude, what the? F Jimmy Ledbetter? More like Jimmy Leather. Jesus Christ, dude. Bro, I never want to hear from motherfuckers ever again this dude was directly recruited from the coal mine okay this dude's been smoking a pack of marlboro reds since he was nine years old while working inside of the coal mine like they directly were like hey man now that you're done smelting iron like it's time to play a little bit of football three 29 27 it's not uncommon to think that there's something more grown up about the way people used to be to look back and think that people seemed older at a younger age than they do now. Let's call it retrospective aging. It doesn't happen to everyone. People do not and never have aged similarly. And there's even the opposite observation that kids these days grow up too fast. That's Albanian genetics, baby. But it's a popular question and subject of numerous memes. So, is it... <laughs> 34-year-old? What the f***? Why is there an Adam mention on a Vsauce video? What? Oh, my God. Why is Adam Friedland in a Vsauce video, dude? What the f***? Host of the podcast, new podcast, unproblematic podcast, the Adam Friedland show. Real? Or is it an illusion fueled by cherry-picked examples that feeds rosy nostalgia for a time when people were tough and didn't have it as easy as you kids have it now. Well, as it turns out, both. Humans today really are aging more slowly than their historic counterparts. Changes in lifestyle, nutrition, smoking habits, healthcare, early life conditions, and skin care, particularly the use of sunscreen, are a huge part of it. By comparing measures of metabolic, cardiovascular, inflammatory kidney, liver, and lung function across time, researchers at Yale and USC have found that we are, in fact, staying younger for longer than we used to. 
So does that mean that 60 is the new 50? Almost. Their results suggest that between the early 90s and the late 2000s, 60 became the new 56. 40 became the new 37 and a half, and 20 became the new 19. Oh, also, during the last century, dentistry and orthodontics have played a huge cosmetic role in the kinds of faces we see in parts of the world. But, interestingly, when faces in magazines are measured from the 1930s to today, the only significant change has been that across all ethnicities, the media is now exposing us to larger lips. Also, retroactive aging can occur over short time spans. When I was a freshman, the seniors in my high school seemed so old to me. But by the time I was a senior myself, I looked in the mirror and at my peers and I was like, Oh my God, bro. Michael from Vsauce is the most boot looking dude I've ever seen. That's crazy. He literally looks like he signed off. <clears throat> he looks like he just signed his, uh, he, he's, he, he's getting a Camaro. Okay. He's about to marry his high school sweetheart and go off to Afghanistan. I, that's hilarious, bro. We're them now, but we don't seem as old as they did. What's going on isn't just about bodies. First of all, the seniors I looked at when I was a freshman truly were older than me at that time. They graduated and went away. And later, when I was a senior, I saw myself as I was. But in my mind's eye, I saw the earlier seniors as they appeared to me when I was younger. Retrospective aging seems to also be about perspective. Let's go back to this tweet. This is George Wimp playing Norm on the TV show Cheers. Now, when Cheers premiered, Wimp was indeed 34, but I looked it up and this image is actually from episode 24 of season five when Wimp was 38. So we're not comparing apples to apples here. However, this is an image of George Wimp at 34 and Ashley Fairbanks made some alterations and a good point. However, here's the rub. These alterations don't make Wint look more like a 34-year-old. They make him look more like a 34-year-old today. Simil yeah, they just made him a fuckboy. Also, I say this all the time, but like, men constantly glance over uh, the impact that a beard has. You know what I mean? Men will always talk about like, oh my God, oh my God, bro. Like, that's you, Hassan? Come on, bro. Do I look like that without a beard? Give me, give me a goddamn break. Shut up. Men don't do facial makeup because we got beards, bro. Similarly, giving the Golden Girls modern day hairstyles and makeup drops their apparent age a lot. Superficial styles and mannerisms can often make not just a big difference, but all the difference. Which supports the hypothesis that retrospective aging is often an illusion. Modes of self-expression are always changing. Clothing, hairstyles, accessories, makeup, mannerisms, language, body language. Now, modes can come back, but never exactly. The context is always a little bit different. And from what's available or acceptable at any one time, we each draw ways of appearing or being in the world. And even if you don't care about how you look or think about how you act, what options you even have are dictated by what's currently popular or normal or being pushed on people like you. Few of us stay at the stream drawing. Okay, I wanna also point something out here about this, but there is one also one component here that he didn't bring up and that is weight. Okay. The factor of weight is such an interesting one because on the one hand, when you're 34, it makes you look older. But like when you hit 38, when you hit 38, it makes you look younger. It's such a weird thing. But he doesn't look all that old here. If you consider that he's 38, just something to consider. <laughs> Someone said Vsauce is 17. Yeah. Okay, dude. Was dressed the way older people. Dress. 
Wait, where the fuck were we? Oh, here. Body language. Now, modes each draw ways of appearing or being in the world. And even if you don't care about how you look or think about how you act, what options you even have are dictated by what's currently popular or normal or being pushed on people like you. Few of us stay at the stream, drawing what's new all our lives. For various reasons, we often wander away with our catch. Perhaps it's because we settle into an identity we're comfortable with, or fear the taboo of not dressing our age, or simply run out of time to care. But when we're gone, the stream keeps changing. And we get older and continue to use the mannerisms and styles we grabbed a while back. Eventually, to whatever those styles initially evoked, a new connotation is added. Old person. My burrito is not from Escuela, you just made that up. Not because the look or behavior is intrinsically for the elderly, but because those who use it, us, became old ourselves. If you want to look older, what do you do? Well, you can dress the way older people dress. And the thing is, that's often how they used to dress too. We think people looked older in the past because they look the way old people do. I'm today. trying to dox my burrito. Dale Irby, a gym teacher at Preston Wood Elementary School in Dallas, Texas, posed for his first yearbook photo in 1973. The following year, he accidentally wore the same outfit again. He says he was embarrassed at first, but his wife Kathy challenged him to do it again. So his he did. wife? Wait, what? Didn't he just say his high school yearbook? I guess he's the teacher, right? <laughs> I'm so confused now because it's 1973. Is he a teacher or is he a student? Why does he have a wife? That's what you get for gatekeeping? And he never stopped. What he gave us is a great exaggerated example of how what once connoted youth comes to be associated with old age. The people we keep seeing a style on get- Dog, he should have swapped out those glasses the moment the 70s were over, okay? And instead he went with like, he went with the pedophile fours, okay? And then just kept it going. He was like, I wanna wear whichever uh, kit makes me look the most like I, you know, uh, decapitated my grandmother. Like throughout the years, you can look at like straight up the 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 pedo serial killer uh, outfit of choice by just looking at this otherwise probably super nice guy. You know what I mean? Austin Ox just exposed you. What the fuck did he do now? Older and older themselves until we think of the style itself as being for. By the way, I see a lot of you making fun of this guy for never switching his shirt over the course of twenty five years but you all seem to love when Asmongold doesn't do it, okay? Oh, it's cool when Asmund doesn't fucking switch his shirt for 20 years, but it's not cool when this guy does. I see it, dude. Y'all y'all are in the rookie hole. Dude, you're in the rookie hole, dude. Straight up. Yeah, oh, Moist Critical. When he does it, it's sick. When this guy does it, it's weird. Old people. He did it on purpose. Holy fuck. Is Chad even listening? Guys, we're all memeing. Are you figuring out you're on Twitch.tv? where everyone is memeing. Like, everyone knows what's happening here, but we're saying something that's not the truth in order to get a guffaw, a ha-ha out, okay? That's where, that's where it's coming from. Retrospective aging, then, is double-pronged, both real and illusory. People in the past really did age faster than us because of differences in nutrition and lifestyle and medicine, but much, if not most, can be chalked up to the fact that we think people like this are dressed like old people. But that's an anachronism. They're dressed like old people from the future. The old people they would become. Yeah. Has anyone ever dressed like a young person from the future? Yeah. Well, it happened in 1941 at the yeah. reopening of the yeah. South Fork Bridge in what Canada. What is this music? A crowd came out yeah. to celebrate and photos were taken. Yeah. In yeah. 2010, yeah. the photos were yeah. digitized yeah. and placed yeah. online. Yeah. That's when this guy was noticed. A time-traveling hipster. Why what? a time traveler wouldn't bother to blend in? And why, with all of history to visit, he chose the reopening of a bridge in the 40s? No one knew. 
That's the crazy! The was confirmed to be undoctored, and researchers put forward the idea that this man was not, in fact, a time traveler. That his shirt wasn't an ironic screen print, but simply bore the logo of the Montreal Maroons, a nearby hockey team at the time. They said his sunglasses and knit sweater were not unusual for the 40s, nor was his portable camera. The only thing that was unusual about him was the hoodie. how casual his attire was. And they're probably right. But this all raises the exciting possibility that someone out there right now, possibly even you. Dude, that's such, dude, dude, straight up, that's copium, okay? I'm sorry, I I'll say it. Vsauce is doing copium. That guy was a time traveler. It's kind of whack that he's trying to fucking hide the truth, okay? That guy's a time traveler, 100%. <laughs> Someone said, nah, he was just a neat, which is true, but he was a neat and a time traveler at the same time. Remember, time traveling is not a job, okay? So you're not in education or training or have a job in that circumstance. You're just a time traveler. You're just doing it for a hobby, but it doesn't matter. It's very clearly he is a neat and a time traveler. Both things can be true at the same time. Lime has precognition. Got one. I, it's so nice to see you. We're, okay, well, we finally got one. I, it's so nice to see you. We're going to go uh, watch JHB interview some asshole. Thanks. Love it, we are here with Crazy Slick. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. That's why. It, it's, that's, that's the power of the bald, man. That's why you fucking rub uh, for good luck and for precognition. Like, that's how it works. What did he know? This is you from earlier. Yo, where'd you get this? I find motherfuckers like you really interesting, bro. I ain't gonna lie. This spot is kind of like a personal thing to me. You get what I'm saying? It's just like a personal vibe. You feel me? What's really crazy is you wouldn't even uh, wanted this if you ain't seen me post it. You get what I'm saying? I don't even think you're really hungry like that, to be honest, bro. So go ahead. Find yourself something to eat, bro. Go open your fridge, bro. This is not the fridge. This is the internet. You get what I'm saying? This shit tastes insane, though. Shit wild. Seafood pasta, UK. What I'm saying, this shit market price, you feel me? Shit, I wish I could put you on, but it's really a personal vibe, you know? I bring my loved ones here, you know? You know what I'm saying? You be easy, bro. I agree. Yeah. No, that's exactly what it is. I'm gatekeeping. Shut up. That's what we're doing. And if you want to get mad, get mad at Zach Fox because he taught me. He had the, like, the dry lemon pepper wings that he posted on his Instagram and then started making fun of everyone who was asking about it. So now I realize like I should be the, I should do the same thing. Okay. Also, it's not the real reason. There's another place that I absolutely love. And I was just like telling all my friends, like all of my friends, bro. Okay. Listen, here's what happened. There's a chicken place that I love. I love it. And I can't shut the fuck up about it. I tell all my fucking friends. And then the other night I'm ordering from the chicken place. It's not Dave's hot chicken. No, I'm ordering from the chicken place and they ran out of chickens. I was like, fuck that. I'm done. Never again. It's over. It's over, dude. They, I literally, I ordered a chicken. They put the order in, okay? And then they call me back and they're like, sorry, we don't have any uh, white meat left. I'm like, what the fuck? You're a chicken shop. This is all you sell. Stop trying to figure out what the chicken shop is. You're never going to know. And I'm not going to fucking tell you, okay? Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I'm not even playing about this. I'm, I'm not, this is not even a joke. Okay, this is real life. This is this is not a movie. This is not a video game. Okay, this is my life right now, dude. I'm sorry. You really think your pull is enough to run a chicken place out of chicken? I back you, but nah. No, the place is already popping on its own, I guess, because the fucking chicken is excellent. It's so juicy. It's so succulent. Man, I haven't said that word in a while. Listen, it's great. Okay, it is succulent. Okay, it's fire. So when you have it once, you're like, oh, I want to have it every day. Every day. Okay. I'm a fan, right? And you're like, what, succulent? Why are you saying ha huh, to succulent? It's a good word. It's scrumptious. It's succulent, okay? It's juicy. It's great. I'm sucking on the bones after. I'm not done, you know what I mean? I finish it and I'm like... <sniffs> Only thing I don't actually end up eating is the bones and the fucking cartilage, you know? It's perfect. Perfectly made every time. And you know when it's like the inside is juicy, but then the outside like is fried, like the, the, the chicken skin, which I usually don't even eat because it's bad macros, like that's fried to a crisp. So I let myself go a little crazy, okay? Because it's like, it's tantalizing. 
So I say, you know, I'll just have a little bit. I'll just have a little bit of the skin, you know, just a little bit. Nim, 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 nim. Just a bit. Okay. I nibble on that skin. All right. <sighs> My man. I don't know how the fuck they do it. It's so good. Okay. It's so good. And honestly, it's good, but it's a little busy at night. So now I'm not it's telling anybody. It's unknowingly dressed like people in the future will. And your appearance in photos will someday freak them out. You know, it might be fun to start dressing even more casually or in some other odd way on the off chance that you happen to nail it and years from now you are worshipped as a time traveler. Oh, that reminds me of today's sponsor. Whoa! <laughs> Neurons. Wow. Whoa! <laughs> Who's that guy? Does he look like a Bill? A Mark? A Justin or a Josh? Pause right now if you'd like to think about it. It's a combination of all of those things. Boom. According to research from Millsaps College and Miami University, this is Mark. Or I was wrong. At least, this is what we think people named Mark look like. By asking people to make and rate digitally created faces, researchers were able to put together prototypical faces for a number of different names. This is apparently what we- Oh God, this could get wildly, wildly inappropriate. I feel like studies like this. We think a Josh looks like. A Bill, a Justin, a Dan, a Brian. Damn, that's a Kyle Kalinske, dog. That's what that is. <laughs> That's just Kyle Kalinske when he was younger, okay? But so is Brian. Why do they all look like Kyle Kalinske a little bit? A Tom, what the fuck is going on? And Andy. The idea that names might conjure certain face shapes in our minds isn't that strange. For example, there's Wolfgang Kohler's famous finding that when asked which of these shapes is named Booba and which is named Kiki, People of all that's different Booba, ages and, that's and cultures and languages that's overwhelmingly Booba. assign Kiki to the spiky one. Yeah, and Booba I mean because it's true. Because it's true. Because sure it's enough, true. It's that is Booba. That's Booba. That's Booba. It's, they say it because it's true. Seems to work with names too. Which one of these men is Tim, and which is Bob? Tim, well, Bob. Almost unanimously, people feel like this is Tim, and this is Bob. That's crazy. But are these men actually named Tim and Bob? Yes, they are. Well, there's the rub. Just because we associate certain names, certain sounds with certain shapes, doesn't mean we're right. There's no such thing as a biological name. If a person still goes by the same name they were given as a baby, long before anyone knew what they would look like as an adult. Well, <laughs> Dog, somebody needs to alert Ben Shapiro, okay? Someone needs to let Ben know because I feel like he's done he's done a lot of content suggesting otherwise, okay? Pretty sure that's like a big chunk of his rhetoric. <laughs> he's just like, no, you were Tim. You were Timothy. Assign Timothy at birth. Don't even try to call yourself a Tom. You're Timothy. Surely there won't be a connection. But as it turns out, there is. No. Believe it or not, in a multiple choice I setting, don't believe it. people can guess a stranger's name just by looking at their face. More often than we would expect from luck alone. It's called the face name matching effect. Here's a stimulus from Am Zwebby's I a Hassan? Research. Do I look like Do a Hassan? Think this man is named Do I look like a Hassan when you guys see me? No, right? I mean, it's hard for you to fucking think of me as anything but now because like you know me as Hassan for so many years. But you also know me as a top of the hour ad break guy. You know what I mean? Like you see on your clocks 204 and you think, oh, top of the hour is here. And you probably associate that with a 60 second ad break. Here's the woman ad break. Now, Jacob. I am Maya Higa. <laughs> Dan, Joseph, or Nathaniel. By just randomly picking a name, people should get this Dan? right 25% of the time. Dan. But Zwebner found that people picked the correct answer. Dan, oh! nearly 40% of the time. What? <laughs> How? Can names actually cause us to grow to look a certain way? Well, apparently they can. 
It has been called a Dorian Gray effect. In Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray, a portrait of the protagonist ages and grotesquely reflects his evil deeds while he himself remains young and pure looking. In a similar way, it seems that in some cases, our own appearance can come to reflect the name Damn. we were given. Vsauce be like, everyone in the 60s did grotesque shit, okay? <laughs> He's like, here's evidence. Uh, after the assassination of Martin Luther King, 65% of the country considered him to be a bad person. So there you go. There you have it, folks. That's the reason. <laughs> because just like Dorian Gray, most people were just grotesque back then. They were doing horrific things. They were so much more racist openly. And that's the reason why they were ugly as fuck. But I kind of think it's really more of a reverse Dorian Gray effect. <laughs> people in the 60s looked old because they were named Matilda or Barbara or Eustace. Like, you can't be Eustace and be like 16, okay? But if you're Eustace or Agatha, Gertrude, okay? These are names, that means you're like 60. You, you have literally, someone by the name of Eustace has never been under the age of 60. That's just never happened, okay? Like, 60 is like a young Eustace. That's one of the younger Eustaces out there. Like, usually they're in the 70. <laughs> yeah, for men, Cletus. Cletus. Buzz is another good one. That or you're trans, Lamau. No, I've made that joke already. I I've, I've literally made that joke. It's like you undergo HRT. You go, like, everyone's fucking yelling at you. And then you have this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that no one else usually gets to take seriously, which is like choosing a name for yourself because no one changes, uh, no one chooses a name for themselves. And then you tr and then you choose fucking Eustace or Gertrude. What the fuck? What are you doing? The fuck are you doing? Why would you do that? Just you know, just choose a normal name like like Allison. Why did you have to be? Gertrude, <clears throat> Hasanabi is only transphobic if you pick a bad name. No, I mean it's just funny. It, it, it's a funny thing. <laughs> why couldn't you? Why didn't you choose Olivia or something? Like what the fuck? You went Agatha? That's crazy. The point is, you know, <laughs> the point is we don't really get an opportunity. Many people don't exercise their opportunity to change their name and choose it. So if you're gonna choose it, do it right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, in the book, Dorian's reality... That's what happens, dude. That's what, it, <laughs> that's what it is, okay? You start recognizing that you're trans. You might have internalized transphobia, okay? Then you slowly but surely start recognizing you're, you're trans. You start doing, the, like, Femboy Fridays. You're doing the coder socks, right? But then there's a second step. You start playing Fallout New Vegas, modded, or... You start playing fucking Hearts of Iron. And then all of a sudden, all the names you know are fucked up. That's, it, it's just like, it's accelerated. And then all of a sudden, you, the, the only naming conventions that you're familiar with are from either of these two games. That's why you, you, you know, end up with like a, a, a trans woman coming out and be like, oh, my name is Agatha. You are not a novelist. What do you mean, Agatha? You're a fucking coder. You're literally doing IT for Uber. Why is your name Agatha? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I'm just, I'm just fucking around. It's a joke. <laughs> Not the Agatha slander. Yo, trans people love Hearts of Iron 4. Learn new things every day here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you are Agatha. You are Maya Higa. Anyway. Ludwig is an old ass name. I do kind of like Ludwig as a name, though. I don't know. I think it's chill. I think it's a is a chill name. As a trans person, this is one of your funniest bits. Yeah, that's how you can make jokes about uh, trans existence, even as a cis person that is not inherently transphobic. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that <clears throat> some trans people might not appreciate that joke and get mad at it. But you know, that's not a the, the joke of it is not like uh, trans existence in general or trans people in general. Anyway, let's continue affects the appearance of his portrait but the face name matching effect goes the other way a inanimate sign a name influences just at chelsea next time what do you mean chelsea is that's what that's normal that like literally is not what i'm talking about chelsea is like a super common name dude for women what do you mean 
<laughs> guy who's never met a human before. What did you just come out of the fucking, uh, <laughs> come out of the Amish village? Like what, what the fuck? Just a normal white girl name, dude. <laughs> No, this started when I made jokes about uh, the, the mod Doreen, the trans mod Doreen that went uh, on Fox News. And I was like, you had, a, you had a whole ass pick of the litter moment, right? And you went with Doreen. <laughs> this is a different era name, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, oh, you meant uh, calling out Chelsea Manning for playing Hearts of Iron? Yeah. Is our actual physical appearance. Well, anyway, it's not news that a person's name can lead others to have certain expectations of them and treat them accordingly. It's been found, for example, that multiracial faces given European names are rated as looking more European than the same faces are when presented with non-European names. The expectations a name carries with it may create a self-fulfilling prophecy, whereby as a person grows up, they're motivated to fulfill those expectations, carry themselves in ways people think someone with their name should, and even like, dislike, accentuate, hide, use, and avoid different parts of their face and body depending on whether or not those parts match their name. It's been found that faces and names that match are emotionally liked more than faces and names that don't. Analysis of voting data has shown that senatorial candidates earn 10% more votes when their names fit their faces. Bro, J.D. Vance, dog. Straight up. Very well. Then when they fit very poorly. Now, with that in mind, Tim Ryan. the effect could literally come from the fact that although... Just kidding. Tim Ryan actually fits the vibes and his face so perfectly. He just has like such a... Ohio is... Having one of the funniest fucking races because Tim Ryan is such a cuck and so is so is JD Vance. However, JB Pritzker, perfect. Perfect. Gavin Newsom, perfect. Gavin Newsom is such a Gavin, dude. He is such a Gavin and he's such a fucking Newsom. Like, when I think Gavin Newsom, I think slick back hair, definitely fucked the, you know, tennis instructor's wife or whatever. Like just the most perfect. John Fetterman's another good one where it's just like, John Fetterman. Uh, what's up? I'm John Fetterman. It fits so perfectly. Blake Masterson fits uh, perfectly as well, but like in a school shooter kind of way. You know what I mean? Of course, this uh, does not fit. There's another thing that I've always talked about, which is uh, extremely white uh, senators and, and House of Representatives members that have names that if you don't know how to read them uh, uh, correctly, they you would think that they're black, like Sherrod Brown. Or uh, what, what was the... There's like a list of names that I've gone through before. Where you're like, oh, that's Sherrod Brown. And you're like, no, that's not... Like, that's, that's just like a, like a white union guy. For the longest time, I thought his name was Sherrod. There's a couple, there's a couple names like that where it's like... I, you know what? It's so funny. Bernie Sanders kind of works that way too. Yeah. Bernie Sanders. Jerome Powell. That's a that's a, uh, another one, Al Franken, but yeah, Gavin Newsom does fit. Uh, Gavin Newsom is perfect for uh, him. Like, is uh, Sherrod? It's yeah, it's supposed to be Sherrod, Sherrod Brown. But for the longest time, I thought it was Sherrod Brown. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Parents don't know what their kid will look like as an adult. The parents do know what they look like, and without knowing it, tend to prefer names that match their faces, which are likely to resemble their child's face as well. But not always. If the dissonance is too great, a person can always change their name, either completely or by simply choosing a nickname. If I had been just a little bit different, I, Michael, could have always gone by Mike. The fact that people can adjust their names to fit them, of course, merely strengthens the face name matching effect. By studying whether the correct name I can't, could be I do that. when different parts of a face were occluded, researchers were able to develop heat maps showing which parts of the face different names are most characteristic. You met a white kid named Kobe? Yeah, except Kobe's name also is not. Like Kobe Bryant's name is also uh, unique. <laughs> so the white kid and Kobe Bryant himself uh, both had a unique name coming directly out of Japan associated with. 
Apparently, looking like an Anne is all about the tip of the nose. It's the bridge of the nose for Arthur's, and the philtrum, or snot trough, for Benjamin's. Aurelis are recognized by their face spiders. What the fuck is an Aurelie? Let's go back to old people. How old is an old person? 73.7. That's according to results published <laughs> in the Journal of American Geriatrics last year. It's the average age people gave when asked, when does old age begin? People under 65 on average said 71, and people over 65 on average said 77. Women said old age began. Th Yo, y'all fucking suck. And if you ask this Twitch chat, they're going to say whatever Hassan is. Okay? You ask Twitch chat, they're going to say 31. Three years later than men did. White people said it began eight years later than non whites did. And people who felt healthy placed old age later in life than those who felt less healthy. But how old do people want to be? Well, that depends on how old they already are. In America, the only people who are the age they would like to be are 21-year-olds. People younger than 21 wish they were- Taylor Swift was so right, dude. Straight up. Nobody likes you when you're 22. Also here, a One Piece fan drew me, okay? I need to do this little brief intermission. Okay, there you go. I'm never watching or reading One Piece, okay? That's Blink-182 and it's 23. Wait, <laughs> oh my God. Wait, stop. Was it actually Was it actually Blink-182? On the previous podcast, I made jokes about Taylor Swift saying like, "Oh, uh, do you ever feel like a plastic bag?" you know, like that she made that song. And now I unironically feel like I'm just saying wrong songs without even realizing that are not attributed to Taylor Swift now. We're older and people older than 21 wish they were younger. People who are 40 wish they were 30. People who are 60 wish they were 40, and people who are 90 wish they were 60. When people are asked if they could be one age forever, the average American picks 36, which is actually how old I am right now, funny enough. No shot, dude. If I was one age forever, I mean, if I have the financial security I have right now, I'm picking fucking 21, dude. That shit was, my body was a machine back then, dude. That's crazy. Dude. Whatever age where I could just, like, slam beers, okay, and eat a pizza at, like, 3.30 only to wake up at 6.30 and be 100% and, and have zero hangovers. That's what I want back, okay? I mean, I was pretty good at 25. I'd say 25, probably. 36 is, like, crazy. 36 is... The reason why people are saying 36 is because that's when they probably got to like their peak financial security. That's when they felt like they were young enough while simultaneously having financials, like some semblance of financial security. That's literally the reason. Here's something else that's funny. Old people are more likely to think they dream in black and white. Not because it's part of the aging process, but what? because they are veterans of the great black and white dream epidemic of the 20th century. What? Prior to the 1900s, Aristotle, Descartes, Freud, everyone who wrote about the topic reported that dreams contained color. But as humanity moved into the 20th century, the number of people reporting color in their dreams dropped just as quickly as the popularity of new black and white movies and TV rose. By the 60s, as color TV and- Wait, does that mean we're dreaming in 4K now? Damn, dude. That's pretty sus. That's pretty sus, Zoomers. You're dreaming in 4K, dude? Movies became more and more common. Reports of color dreams started going back up. And today, people who grew up with black and white TV continue to report more black and white dreams than those who didn't. And later studies across China found the same thing. The frequency of black and white dreaming correlated strongly with how common black and white TV was in a person's area. So, did black and white movies and TV literally change our dreams? Well, first of all, it's not clear whether dreams themselves actually changed or if people just started thinking differently about their dreams. We're trying, but we still haven't found a way to get direct access to dream content. 
Eric Switchable has pointed out that as far as we know, dreams may not be in color or black and white, or sepia or anything. They may be primarily indeterminate in color as they happen, and only later, during recall, do we confabulate details about color. He compares dreaming to reading. Is a novel in color or black and white? As you read a story, what do you see in your mind? It might be the case that dreams, vaporous as they are, are something we simply have a terrible grip on, and that movies and TV shows have given us the- Bro, this motherfucker literally went from why old people look hella old to like dreams. And how, like, the visual aspect of our existence uh, changes, like, you know, the way we recount stuff or the way we see things. Bro, get back to the old thing. The illusion of understanding them. In fact, Switchable has speculated that smells and touch sensations are rare in dreams today. But future people with smelly, touchy-feely VR shows might think that they dream with lots of textures and odors and find it strange, maybe even frightening, that few of us seem to. But why would we think that dreams were like moving pictures and not normal waking life? Well, no one knows. It might be that motion pictures are just simply the closest thing we have to dreaming that isn't dreaming. Unlike still images, paintings, photographs, tapestries, motion pictures and dreams can contain movement and narrative and cause and effect. And unlike stage plays or real life, motion pictures and dreams are not made of anything that is even remotely similar to what they depict. They're both made of phantoms. Images are uncanny things. A okay, bro. in an image is frozen in time. Calm down, man. Jesus Christ. This is way too fucking dang. But yet can seem to grow old. Our own image can depend on what we are called. And they're the closest thing we have to what our mind does when we're away. Do you get the picture? Or does the picture get you? Stop! No, he's just saying, like, our existence is, is uh, clouded by our perception, and our perception is clouded by our existence. He's, it's, a, it's a dialectic.